My name is Abba Moro. I represent the very good people of the Benue's House in the District. And by the grace of God and the support of my colleagues, the minority leader. Mr. President, I want to appreciate the debates that have gone on so far in the course of the motion moved by the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation. Mr. President, I want to anchor my comment on this issue from two perspectives. From the perspective of the budget, from the perspective of the meetings that have been held this far on this issue, and then from the perspective of the derogatory and undermining comments that have been made on my position and the position of others as minority leaders. Mr. President, first, from the perspective of the budget. As has been noted, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, this budget. This budget is the product of painstaking efforts by the Executive and the National Assembly. National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. And all of us here, directly or indirectly, have been involved in the process. And we all know that in the process of making a budget, everybody, either at the level of the committee or at the level of the Senate at plenary or the House of Plenary, makes contributions. And if we have observations as to whatever is not correctly put in perspective from what majority of the people have advanced, we all know the procedure for addressing such issues. And I think in this instant case, we have not done that. We have not done that. And I don't know what it means to some people, but I know that this Senate is supposed to be a Senate of matured minds. And in the process, therefore, we must surrender our interests to the interests of this very institution and the institution of the country called Nigeria. To do otherwise is certainly irresponsible. And I make bold to say here that Nigeria is not an island on itself. There are other parliamentary institutions in other countries. And so when something untoward like this begins to happen, I think we must reflect very soberly and get ourselves back on the right tracks. And that is the reason why I say here that this budget, I understand that my brother here, Senator Ningi, had made some observations about the budget. Mr. President, I want to inform you that I attended that meeting of Northern Senators with you that day. Due to the respect that I have for you and the respect that I have for the leadership and the institution of Northern Senators. And when we got there, observations were made. And I think the conclusion that we arrived at that time was that these documents on the observations must be presented to the Senate President. And we agreed, even informally, that if there are any anomalies here, they can be corrected by the either corrigendum or uh, amendment to the, to the budget, or that the leadership will take note of the anomalies and correct them in the subsequent budget. If at all. If at all. And so, as a member of the Northern Senators Forum, I feel offended that a press conference was addressed, interviews were granted on an issue that is already before the Senate. I think it's inappropriate. And I told the, Senate, the Deputy Senate President that, look, I didn't give anybody any permission to speak on my behalf on that matter anymore. And so we have gotten here. I think it's very simple. That now that the Senate Committee on Appropriation has provided the correct version, this debate ordinarily should end. I'm not grandstanding. And so this thing must be put in proper perspective. And I'm happy, Mr. President, that you have done the right thing now, that all of us are sober, because the rule is there for us to play according to it. And if any senator 
violates any of these rules, Chief Whip, you know the consequence. It's not correct that we come and display ourselves here like children every day, shouting at ourselves, and then we'll be holding some persons who walk to the Senate presence and sit there more than 10 times in the, at a sitting, distracting the, 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 the process of our lawmaking. And then blackmailing everybody and holding people to ransom. Uh, Mr. President, I think this is unacceptable. And so, the figures are there for everybody to see now. The lie is there for everybody to see now. And we must do the, the right thing. Rather than pandering to our egos and the rest of them, I think we should do the right thing by tendering an unreserved, <laughs> unconditional apology to this Senate. Yes. 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 Having, having said that, Mr. President, you will recall that in this Senate, after the ouster of some persons from the leadership of the minority, my colleagues unanimously on a motion by my elder statesman, distinguished Senator Alero, to nominate me to replace the minority leader. Instantly, Senator Ned Boko suggested that everybody who supported my nomination at that meeting should sign there and then. And we got 31 uh, signatories out of 41, 49. Before the plenary the following day, we got additional 10, making it 41 that we presented to you here by my colleague Senator Now. That was the basis of which you announced my name as a new minority leader selected by the other minority parties, including Senator Osita Ngutu. And so why we aspire to get certain things at certain, at certain points, if we don't get, let heaven not fall. Because this is heaven falling or not heaven. Or. So I was duly nominated, I was duly elected, and I have been doing my work here. And so, Mr. President, I want to at least address this issue of me not doing the work of opposition, and we're not doing the work of opposition. It's not correct. Mr. President, according to Section 26, 27, there shall be a minority leader of the Senate who will be nominated from the minority parties in the Senate. Two, the minority leader shall liaise with the Senate majority leader. B, second motions for the parties on major issues. C, second motions on formal and non-partisan business of the Senate. D, perform such other duties as the President may allocate to him. Mr. President, there is no motion here that I have not seconded. <laughs> and even today, even today, I have consulted and liaised with the Senate Majority Leader more than five times. So on a very serious note, I think we are doing our work here. Let me say that as a Minority Leader, I will not just stand and criticize policies of government for the sake of it. All we want for this country is stability, growth, progress, and creating the highest happiness for the highest number of Nigerian people. That, to my mind, is not necessarily achieved through confrontation and unnecessary criticism. And so, I want all of us the federal government of Nigeria is the federal government of Nigeria. It's not an APC federal government. It's not a PDP federal government. And I think, in the spirit of the founding fathers of federalism, we must all work together for the benefit of everybody. And that is exactly what I am going to do. That is what exactly the minority leadership of this Senate is going to do. Thank you, Mr. President. Having listened to the State of the Nation address, by the minority leader, very able minority leader, who has been doing his work. It is not the Senate that accused you that you are not doing your work. It could be an individual's uh, view that maybe because you are not like Mike Tyson, you, you have not boxed anybody yet. They expected you to fight. I'm very, I'm very delighted with your speech. 
So because we have exhausted these issues, we will give uh, two people, uh, maybe three, the opportunity to say something. The first person I would like, Senator Adelio, you've spoken on the issue already. If you know you have spoken on the issue, please, if you have spoken on the issue, please give us time so that we give, or give a chance to those who have not spoken. The problem we have in the Senate, the problem we have in the Senate is that the Senate President has had the habit of inviting ranking senators most times to talk for more than 10 times because he, he was thinking that they would be able to guide the Senate because almost 80 percent of the senators are new. But where the ranking senators confuse even the new senators who are coming, the Senate President, the Senate President has the right to, to withdraw those privileges. So, uh, Senator Kau, you posted on your Facebook page about the budget padding. Uh, you tell us whether the uh, Facebook page addresses us so that we know whether your, uh, your listing was hacked or not.